<laughs> wow. <laughs> um, Coach Izzo, thank you. Glad I passed the homework check. Um, wow, it's an incredible day to return to the state of Michigan and become the head women's basketball coach at Michigan State University. Truly, truly overwhelmed with gratitude for this opportunity. Um, I remember growing up here and playing at halftime of the basketball games, so for this to come full circle uh, is truly amazing. Uh, some thank yous, thank you to my family, my husband Tim, he's the real MVP. Will, my statistical guru, he'll know all the stats of the Big Ten. Clara, my superhero loving six year old who reminds us every day that we all have superpowers and we gotta make sure that we use them. Um, another thank you to my village and my family and my staff and all the people along the way uh, who've, who've made today possible. Big, a big thank you to President Woodruff, Ellen Haler, Tiffany Clark, Ashton Henderson, and Julie Burgess for believing in me and helping me through this process. Uh, I'd also like to say a big thank you to Bowling Green State University, the athletic administration, the president, the community, and the team. Uh, they wrapped their arms around us and made it for an incredible ride during our time there. I would also like to thank Hall of Famer and Coach Sue Ramsey. I was fortunate to work under her for seven years as a Division II assistant. She took me in as a young assistant and taught me two really important things, to take care of people and take care of details. Uh, to the Michigan State University Women's Basketball Squad, I am really looking forward to building relationships, chasing excellence, and we will stay in pursuit together day by day. Uh, we will do it together through our four, five core values, being a great teammate, Manners matter, which ultimately means operating out of gratitude, trust, toughness, and commitment. I'm thrilled to be the sixth, I can't believe it's six, six, that's just amazing, sixth head women's basketball coach in Michigan State University history. Uh, it's funny having a jersey with six on it. That feels extra special since it you know, typically doesn't happen. Uh, I'd like to thank Coach Susie Merchant for all the time and energy she has poured into the program and all of the other coaches who came before, Coach Bale, Coach Marino, Coach Langland, and Coach McCauley, who paved the way for the tradition of the program. We are excited for the challenge of playing in the Big Ten, one of the best conferences in the nation. This past season, seven teams made the NCAA tournament, including three in the Elite Eight and one in the National Championship game. It's as good as it gets. East Lansing and the Michigan State University community mean so much to me and my family. We've been cheering our hearts out for Sparty for a long time. Funny story, we recently, at, at Holy Green, we recently beat Memphis in the WNIT, and I couldn't find my family anywhere. Well, lo and behold, I found them crowded around the television watching men's Sparty basketball in the Sweet 16 duke it out with Kansas State in overtime. I was like, do you guys care about what, what, we just had a big win, I can't find anybody. Clearly we know where their priorities are. We will invest deeply into the community and cannot wait to watch the students and community come together to pack the Breslin. We need you in the stands. As Alan shared earlier, women's basketball is as good as it has ever been. And playing in front of an engaged crowd really matters. We will work hard to build on the tradition of MSU women's basketball. That includes 18 NCAA tournaments and 22 total postseason appearances, four Big Ten championships, and one Big Ten tournament title. The tradition of the program is incredibly motivating. Our expectations of the program will be to continuously stay in pursuit of excellence on and off the court. We will play team basketball and use the sport of basketball as a transformative experience for our student athletes. When you invest into the team, fully, fully into the team, your entire experience changes. We're gonna really value that. In closing, thank you so much. We are thrilled, incredibly motivated for the opportunity, and I know I've shared this over and over again, but so, so grateful. Thank you so much. After that game, did you hear like right away? Soon after the game, and you know we played late, so right. I, I knew it was gonna be a quick decision. It was a good decision I was gonna have to make quickly. So yeah, we're excited. And your innermost emotions when you got that word? Thrilled, and uh, you know the duality of it too, because the, the team I coached at Bowling Green we loved deeply. <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of 
there's a lot of transitional <laughs> things that go into it. Um, it's really hard to leave those kids, but obviously thrilled for the team here and thrilled for the opportunity. The little moments of being hired that Alan discusses about coming undercover, dressing all in black. <laughs> when you think of the fact that he actually did that, they showed up and were watching you discreetly. Like, what do you think of that? They took it seriously. I think it mattered to them, not just who you are on a resume or who you are on a reference, but to see it live. And um, yeah, I'm really glad we won that game, too. Yeah. You know, I had no idea they were there, but um, I know, for me, I know how serious they were about it. Family aspect that you created in Bowling Green was pretty evident in reading about that. How much and how soon can you do that here, and how much of a goal was that here? You know, I would say culture isn't built in a day, but it's built every day. So it's, it's every day, and um, it takes time. And you know, to have an assumption that just because we talk about it, it's going to be real is, is sort of silly. But when we talk about it and we live it and we keep doing it day in and day out, it, it becomes real. Did you have a perception of this program from the outside? Not, to be honest, not necessarily. You know, when I was at uh, BGSU, that's what I was focused on. I was focused on that team and that program. So. Robin, with more eyes on women's college basketball yeah. than ever, how excited are you to try to get this program to that level? It's so energizing. I mean, I'm watching the Final Four and the, the level, the competitiveness, the eyes on it, as it should be, because it's incredibly high-level basketball. Um, it's energizing, it's motivating, you know, and at Michigan State, we're, we're part of that. We're a national team, and um, I'm excited for the challenge. Good. Yeah. You know, it's funny, I, uh, I was sharing with my husband, Tim, that like one of my fondest memories was now this sounds a little silly, but the melting moments ice cream sandwiches, you know, I used to get when I was a little kid here. Uh, but it, that's what one of the things that makes Michigan State so special is the community is such a part of it. You know, like I remember growing up, Michigan State was the ticket. That's that's what that's the big thing in town. So um, the engagement of the community is makes playing at Michigan State really a cool opportunity. You've touched upon this a little bit, but in the sense of the how much the community comes out to support women's basketball. Yeah. I mean, what are your expectations as you enter now your first season coming up this next year with the fan base and just how much they do support women's basketball? Well, the expectations of that won't change. I'm, ex I'm excited to get to know them. And I know for the student athletes I've coached when I was at Ashland and when I was at BG, those were full gyms. And what a cool experience for your kids, you know, where they know that they are valued and cared about. And to have that here and to continue to build that here uh, will be a really cool part of our student athletes experience. What's your triplets' names again? Your kids' names? Will and Clara. Do they like Melton Moments? <laughs> I think they're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's just the first order of business for you here in the States? People, you know, uh, all the transitional parts, we, a staff, and then getting with the team, you know, figuring out our team and, and the roster and the team for next season and, and building relationships. So, um, you know, when I went to Bowling Green, I've had experience with what the first 90 days looks like, and the most important piece you can build into is the people time. Do you have a timeline at all for when you want to get your coaching staff established? As soon as possible. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What's the last couple of weeks been? One more, then I got a crapper for Okay. <laughs> just, I mean, you're coaching Bowling Green. Yeah. I mean, then they're five years, but then all of a sudden the last two weeks, or so last week, I guess, this all happens. What's the whirlwind been like for you? I think I think I was coaching a game six days ago. Mm -hmm. I think it was six days ago. So, it, you know, but that's the way sports works. It's fast, and uh, it's really exciting. It's been really exciting. It's been a lot of energy, uh, but transitional energy is enthusiastic. So, yeah. Uh, we're excited to get here. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for coming out. Yeah, thank Thanks, you. Robin. Thanks for what you expect. You know, um, the foundation is there, Brian. I mean, it, I, I think that she has everything she needs to be successful. So I'm not necessarily monitoring success or evaluating success based off of championships. It's are our student athletes healthy? Are they happy? Is our community involved? Um, you know, is she engaged in the community? Those are things that are going to monitor our, our expectation as it relates to success. 
Did you, can you say, did you and Susie leave on good terms? Is she content with this? I think so. I mean, I, I uh, Susie, like Mark D'Antonio, uh, like Kathy George, is going to be a part of our, our family forever. Um, and so you'll see her around, and uh, you know, I think that she'll definitely be a part of what we do moving forward. Just one more quick one from you, Alan. Uh, I just have one more. You mentioned the family aspect of her. Were you not surprised to see the outpouring of support from the people at Bowling Green about her, or what did you think when just the love started to come out for her? I was a little surprised. Um, because typically when you're at games, you don't hear the fans talk about the coach the way they were. And, uh, you know, you could feel how much they adored her and how, how much that she was embedded in their community. Thank you.